everybody, it's your boy Schneider1 with Schneider Elite Gaming bringing you a Paragon Rants video. That's right, we're going to be taking topics, things that people said, YouTube video, forum ideas, whatever it may be. Something that just kind of stood out to me and I felt like the viewers should check out out now this week i went i came across a youtube video about dopamine levels and comparison uh comparing legacy to the current patch and how where we're coming from compared to where we're going and it was it was just freaking crazy so i decided you know what i'm gonna make a video ranting about how i felt my reaction to what he was saying because it was all good information it was just like everything that he was saying just it felt so right and it just made complete sense and it really kind of just touched me. So I decided that I was going to bring the information to you um, because it was kind of hard to follow as far as the guy who was presenting it. But the information was nonetheless freaking fantastic. So just to let you guys know what it was about, it was about dopamine um, which if you don't know what that is, it's a chemical in the brain that gives you that warm and fuzzy whenever you have a reaction to some kind of stimulus. So whether it be video games, sex, friends, whatever, you, you react to it in a certain way. And it gives you uh, certain chemicals in the brain go off when you start to um, have that interaction. So the, the analogy started out with talking about uh, first person shooters like Halo, um, Call of Duty, um, anything that you have some kind of PvP um, uh, shooting game. And the, the way that he kind of phrased it was um, when you go into a quick match and you start playing, um, you initially you're going to have dopamine. Like you're going to have a dopamine release and you start to really react to the, the stimulus of the game. But um, there are varying levels throughout different types of modes or aspects in games. So to illustrate that, he said, whenever you shoot someone in a quick match, you know, you really don't get a dopamine high from uh, freaking killing somebody. They respawn. There's no real objective. It, it didn't feel like it was meaningful because there was no, like, compromise or benefit to just that one kill. The only real dopamine um, increase was happening when uh, it was actually just playing the game. But in comparison to a competitive game where uh, you only have one life and if you were to die... That death is so significant that there was an elevated dopamine release. Um, so the difference, there's two types of dopamine releases. There is, you know, the objective strategy, like what happened in the game was meaningful. So you had that dopamine release. And then you have that exciting um, initial reaction to the way the game is being played. So those are the two things that he illustrated off the bat right in the beginning. And then he was like, now let's talk about Paragon. And I'm like, what? Let's do this. So he started off with saying um, in uh, in Legacy, right? Um, and in comparison to the new patch. So in the new patch, you have buffs. And whether it be gold buff, green buff, um, all the river camps, what, however you, what, you pick or choose whatever you want to talk about. But um, when you kill that, do you feel a sense of pride do you feel like it was meaningful do you are you attached to what just happened and quite frankly it, it was kind of uh he alluded to basically no you don't feel any kind of uh sensation that really drives a home the importance of those buffs um it just didn't you don't feel it um it's just another part of the game that is just a a, a wicket to hit on your list of things to do now in legacy um he compared that to um, black buff, um, and he compared that to um, harvester kills. So, whenever in Legacy, whenever you were killing a harvester, it, it it took a long amount of time. It did a lot of damage to the amount of experience that your enemy team could have, and it was a focal point slash uh, initiated fights. And it kind of it made the the whole killing a harvester feel important. Um, especially when you like went into their jungle, you took a harvester and then they chased you out and you made it alive. You just felt a huge satisfaction from accomplishing the task. Um, they're both, uh, objective, uh, new, uh, new patch versus legacy, but there's a difference in dopamine release because of how you felt about the objective. Now, the second thing that he wanted to talk about was the jungle. Now, whenever you're immersed in some kind of atmosphere, um, you feel like you're you're really um, immersed in legacy, the jungle. 
Um, you could get lost. Um, it was a, uh, it was like an ecosystem inside of an ecosystem, um, if you will. And basically because of the, the way that the jungle was set up, um, you genuinely had a, a sense of fear, which created a dopamine release. It, it, it's a, it's a reaction that you get, um, because it wasn't, um, the, the way that it was set up, that it was very immersive. Um, there was no drawn line between your jungle and their jungle. It just kind of flowed together and was dangerous. And because it was that, that danger, uh, you really felt like, um, your, he explained that the dopamine release was, was fairly great. But now with the, the changes with monolith, it's very compartment, compartmentalized, um, meaning that, um, the line, the line is drawn right through the middle of the map. Um, the transition from your side jungle to their side jungle is very, very, very um, apparent. Um, you can't be in another person's jungle and not see them or know where they are. It's just, it, there's so many, just you could see right through all different angles in the jungle. It's not that immersive, dangerous ecosystem that was in Legacy. So the the conclusion that he made there was, you know, you took away a lot of what made the jungle great. Um, by not having that that river, by having a completely connected jungle, and you know, I was kind of picking up what he was throwing down, but it didn't. He didn't necessarily sell me on it, but it felt like, yeah, I mean, okay, you know, I I kind of I see where you're going with it. Um, the way you feel about the jungle prior to the one that you have now is different, um, and, and it's whatever. Um, the next thing that he brought up was the the whole killing aspect, and this is what directly related to like the CS:GO, Halo, first-person shooter, um, spawn die, spawn die, always constant interaction. Um, this is where he tied that in. He said that Legacy, when you died, you paid for it, meaning it took you a while to get back into combat. Um, it took you a while to take objectives. You'd fall behind, and there was a a penalty for dying, and because of that penalty kills and deaths felt more important um you you were definitely more careful of what was going on and because of that penalty you had a dopamine release because you were more aware of what was going on when that was happening it made you pay more attention to kills and deaths it wasn't just you know constant interactions like the cs go but with the transition to monolith we started seeing that more you know die respond die respond interaction and deaths tend to not feel as um, important as they should be. Even though it affects the game in a negative manner and it really, um, the the difficulty of coming back, like if a team gets ahead um, because of deaths, isn't necessarily apparent because you don't feel the, the, the penalty in the moment. Um, so he kind of alluded to that and I, you know, I kind of agreed with him. Uh, I feel like if I die early and I come back right away that there's no real penalty for dying. Um, it doesn't feel apparent. Like I don't feel like I'm, I'm really paying for anything until the late game. Um, so I mean to each their own as far as that comparison, but the one that freaking just drove it home was comparing, uh, prime helix and it wasn't necessarily the buff aspect of it, but it was when he talked about the dunk mechanic. Now, if you guys remember back in Legacy, the dunk mechanic either A, allowed you to revive inhibitors, or B, it allowed you to have super buff and you could take stuff and empower your minions. You got to choose, depending on what location you had to dunk it in. What that enabled was a comeback mechanic. And it, it, what that means is, like, you could be losing the entire game with one swift steal of prime and a good dunk, you were able to reset your inhibs, come back, and you had this apex of a climax, and it just, you remember those games. Uh, to this day, I remember every single match that I had that kind of comeback because it was just so dynamic. Now, you know, it's not like that at all. The the it, They've created the game in a way that it has this tie-down mentality, meaning that everything has to come to an end and it's it, it has to come to a conclusion and it's forced that way by the scaling of the characters, the cards that, you, that you've been um, buying and you know who's gotten more gold at one point in time. There really aren't that big of opportunities to have this dramatic comeback. You know, a 30 minute game isn't turning into an hour long game because you are, you know, outwitting, outperforming, outplaying and really just grinding it out and making a, a superior play at the end 
it's not it's not like that anymore. And so his argument was that that comeback mechanic, that that super high that you got for just coming back and winning the game, it just that in itself, like it, a dopamine high. You just felt on cloud nine, jumping up, wooing, freaking just saying suck it to the enemy team. And granted, I understand why they changed it. You know, that kind of experience, it, it's tra traumatizing. You know, being that guy that just let the game go an hour and 20 minutes and you just let the other team win, I get it. I understand why you changed it. But in three days, four days, you forget about that and you're playing again. It's not a big deal. But for those guys that had those comebacks, God dang, it was just freaking amazing. So with all that being said, he ended the video with a question. And the question was, was it worth taking away those objective highs those, you know, love for the game, you know, those those things that made it feel like you were doing impactful moments with throughout the match and changing it to a more dopamine high from the fast pace and craziness of the game. Now, here's my question to you. Do you think it was worth it? Do you think it was the right move by Epic to shift the game in that kind of style? And I'm not talking, I'm talking strictly objective, like dopamine for dopamine, was it a good change? And is there a way to incorporate everything that was great about Legacy in what we have now? I mean, because right now it kind of feels like a, you know, arena brawler. Like we're just fighting each other and whoever wins the most fights wins. Like I, I understand the, the ideas behind what's going on right now. But is there a way to kind of combine some of those um, dramatic effect, uh, you know, objective play to give us that dopamine effect, whether it be a comeback mechanic or whatever? Is it possible? Um, that's all I got for you guys today. That is my rant. Um, I hope you guys like the content. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you want to support this type of style of video. And throw your comments. I want to know what you guys feel um, because I know it, it, it hit my heartstrings. I was a huge fan of Legacy. You know, I can see where they're going and why they went the way that they went. But, it, you know, I kind of, you know, I feel like I miss some of the things in the past and wish that they could incorporate it and kind of seamlessly like feed it all together. I want to know what you guys think. I want to know what you guys have to say. Throw it in the comment section and I will reply. Thank you guys for your guys' time. That's all I got. Peace.